Hello, and welcome to the Office of International Admissions and Programs presentation on the OPT STEM extension. This presentation is intended to inform you, our international F1 students, about the application process for the OPT STEM extension and details on completing the Form I-983. Please review our other presentation about the OPT STEM extension regulations and reporting requirements for more information. If you have further questions after reviewing these presentations, please contact us using the information shown on this slide. Please take a moment to review these common terms that we will be mentioning throughout the presentation. DHS is the Department of Homeland Security. DHS oversees all government agencies related to international students and the security of the United States. USCIS, or United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, approves and or denies all OPT STEM applications, as well as other benefit applications. SEVP is the Student and Exchange Visitor Program, of which CVIS is the reporting function. This is where your international student advisor tells CVIS what you are doing, such as your employment information and physical living address. You are familiar with STEM and OPT as an F1 benefit of being able to work. E-Verify is a number that your employer needs to provide to you in order to qualify for the OPT STEM extension on the I-765 form. To be eligible for STEM benefits, your employer must participate in the E-Verify program. Information about E-Verify from USCIS can be found at the end of this presentation. The SIP code or CIP code can be found on your I-20 under the major slash program information block. This code is a required field on the form I-983. A link to the STEM SIP code list is provided at the end of this presentation. Your DSO or designated school official is your international student advisor at UHCL. You can find out who your advisor is by looking at the OIAP webpage for current information. A link is provided at the end of this presentation. We will briefly go over the application process when first applying for the OPT STEM extension. You can apply up to 90 days before your post-completion OPT ends. Remember, you must be in an approved post-completion OPT period to be eligible. Generally, OIAP can take 7 to 10 business days to process a complete submission. At peak times, this may be longer. Remember, we process on a first-come, first-served basis and will be unable to expedite an application. Please be sure to plan ahead. USCIS must receive the I-20 with the OPT STEM recommendation on it no later than 60 days after it was issued. USCIS takes a minimum of 90 days to process. Remember, if your application is not complete, you may receive a request for evidence or RFE. If you get an RFE, please contact your international student advisor by email with a scanned copy of the RFE so we can assist you with your response. Failure to respond within the given timeline and without the requested information could result in a denial by USCIS. Here you will find the documents that are required to be uploaded into the OPT STEM application on the ISD portal. Please note that file size must be under 15 megabytes. You will also be asked to choose your delivery method. If you choose to upload a prepaid shipping label, you must ensure that the from and to addresses give your name and address. This will avoid incorrect information and having to redo the label. You can upload a copy of your prepaid mailing label into your request on the ISD portal. Submit the following documents in one PDF on the International Student Documents Portal under the Alumni tab. The I-765 form. You will use 
the code C3C in section 16. The form I-983, sections 1 through 6 must be completed. Do not submit the self-evaluations at the time of application. A valid passport photo biographical page or pages. Your I-94 printout or a copy of the card that you received at the time of your entry to the U.S. Your F-1 U.S. visa or I-797 approval notification for those who changed their status to F-1. Two recent identical U.S. sized passport photos. A check or money order for 410 U.S. dollars payable to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Copies of your previous EAD card or cards, both front and back. Official transcript that states the degree you have earned and a copy of your degree certificate. Some students may change their employer while their OPT STEM extension application is pending with USCIS. If this happens to you, follow the following instructions. Complete an OPT update in the ISD portal. Submit a completed Form I-983 in the ISD portal with the new employer information. Complete a new and updated revised Form I-765 using the new employer information and E-Verify number. Request an I-20 reprint so that you can include this in your information to USCIS. You do not have to submit another check or money order as you are updating USCIS with new information and not reapplying. When you receive your new I-20, you should confirm your new employer details on page 2, sign the I-20, and send a copy of it along with your letter, copy of receipt notice, new I-765, and a copy of the passport page to the address on your receipt notice. Please make sure that your letter explaining the reason for submission is on top of the other documents when sending to USCIS. Please take out your I-20 at this time. We will be reviewing the key areas of the Form I-983 that are important for you to know when you are completing this form. Although you must complete the entire form, we will only be reviewing the form where we think you will need additional information. The Form I-983 can be completed as typewritten or handwritten, although a typed Form I-983 is preferred. The name of the school where STEM degree was earned. This should be UHCL unless you are applying for STEM based on a previously earned degree at another accredited U.S. institution. DSO name. Please refer to our webpage at www.uhcl.edu slash international for current staff and alphabet breakdown. Please enter the name and contact information of the advisor currently responsible for your CBIS record. This may or may not be the same as who is currently listed on your I-20. The STEM eligible SIP code can be found on your I-20 in the Program of Study box under Major. For the Based on Prior Degree section, the answer will be no if you wrote UHCL in the above box named Name of School where STEM degree was earned. If you apply for STEM based on a previously earned degree from another institution, then the answer will be yes. Please read Section 2 thoroughly and sign before scanning it. Please do not send OIAP an electronic signature as it will not be accepted. This means you must physically sign it before scanning. Your employer should complete Section 3. If you are continuing with the same employer from your post-completion OPT, please advise your employer that the start date of employment should be the first day of your STEM extension for example, one day after the end date of your current OPT EAD card. 
SCVP has indicated that this box is meant to indicate the beginning of the STEM OPT training. If, however, you are completing this form because of a change in employment while on OPT STEM, the start date would be the start date with your new employer. You are required to complete the compensation area. This information is kept confidential. DHS wants to ensure that all students are paid similarly to a U.S. worker, and so this information is used for this reason only. Your employer will determine who is eligible to sign Section 4 of the Form I-983. This can be a different person who will sign Section 6. For example, this could be an HR manager or your supervisor. Please make sure that it is not an electronic signature. Have the employer physically sign the form before scanning. Please ensure that the information in employer site information is accurate. Where are you actually working? This may or may not be the same as the employer address. This is the information that is needed and that ICE will use for any site visit. The name of official refers to your direct supervisor the person who is actually supervising you at the location at which you are working. This may or may not be the same as in the previous section. Section 5 is the training plan section of the Form I-983. This section should be individualized just for you and should include sufficient detail in each section. Your DSO is looking for detailed training information and how it is directly related to your major program of study. For example, if you have a degree in biology, your job slash training should be related to that field and should be clearly explained on the Form I-983. Just because you took two classes in another area, say maybe marketing, does not mean that you can work in marketing. The goals should be clearly outlined and specific to your training, skills, and what you will achieve in a given period of time. Your employer must also describe how they evaluate your performance. If they already have a performance evaluation system, they can describe that. For oversight and supervision, your supervision must also be clearly detailed on your Form I-983. Virtual supervision may be acceptable only when the goals and supervision are clearly specified and the form needs to be signed by your employer and supervisor who is directly tasked with overseeing your work and performance. Please note, you can attach additional pages if more room is necessary for this section. Your employers will determine who can sign Section 6. This may or may not be the same person as Section 4. It should be someone who is familiar with your training plan and the person who is conducting your evaluations. Self-evaluations are due in one-year intervals. For example, one year after your STEM program has begun. It is not necessarily one year after you started with that employer, depending on how many changes have occurred in your employment history. You must also submit the final evaluation upon leaving an employer or at the end of your STEM period, whichever comes first. This means that you may submit multiple final evaluations over your OPT STEM period if you change your employer many times. Please refer to our other presentation on the reporting requirements required during the OPT STEM extension. Following is a list of suggested resources for further information on the STEM program. Should you need further information or still have questions regarding your specific situation, please contact us using the information listed above. Thank you for listening to our presentation on the application process and Form I-983 for the OPT STEM extension.